A question to test the basics of electric fields, your understanding of electric fields that is. So we've got a situation here with a computer screen. Uh, it's an older one, it says uh, many computer screens and televisions use a cathode ray tube. That's not true these days, uh, but you can still see them in a physics class demonstration of a cathode ray tube. Um, in any case, some of the older screens used a cathode ray tube uh, where electron beam passes through, as you can see from the diagram, and you have charged uh, plates steering the electron. So electron, this is framing the question more than what's in the question, but you need to be thinking about these sorts of things when you're interpreting a question. You need to kind of extrapolate and see what the use of the situation will be. So the electrons being negatively charged, they'll be attracted towards the positive side and repelled from the negative side. And you would suppose that if you increase or decrease the amount of charge on those plates, you'll increase or decrease the force on the electrons and therefore the distance uh, that it will move to the side, to either side. Um, and if you understand how screens work, um, the, let's draw something, the, the path of the electrons, it might hit the screen here and then you get a little flash, um, it used to be phosphorus, uh, I'm pretty sure that's what it was, coating and uh, the electron hitting it would cause a small flash of light which you, the observer over here, would see. And um, very, you know, millions of these little uh, flashes uh, brought up over time could see a picture, a very small period of time. In any case, that's what's going on. Um, and we've got 20 volts between 4 centimetre uh, plate. A. State the direction of the electric field between the plates. And we've got to be very careful here not to just quickly read it and go, oh, the electrons are travelling that way. I can see that easily to the right. It's not asking that. It's asking the direction of the electric field. So the importance of highlighting and taking very careful note of the words that you're reading. Don't assume it says something. You have to read exactly what it says. So anyway, the direction of the electric field, we know, is the direction that a positive charge would experience a force. So positive is repelled by positive. That means it's going to be downwards. If we were to draw a part of the electric field there, we would see arrows going down, but we wouldn't see them because it's an invisible field. But the arrows appear uh, downwards. So the direction of the field is down or downwards on the page. Okay. Uh, B. B is asking us the size of the electric field. So in other words, this is the electric field strength, E with a wiggly line underneath. The electric field strength, um, there's a couple of formulas for it. There is um, the force per charge, or uh, what is the other one, the voltage um, per uh, distance, or volts per meter. Um, and that's more useful in this case because we've got a voltage of 20 volts and we've got a distance of separation of the plates of 0 0.04 meters. Remember it's given as 4 centimeters, but 0 0.04 meters is what we're after. So uh, that calculates itself out to be 500 volts per meter. And you could use that notation or you could use volts over meters as a notation either would be acceptable um, yeah this is what most people use these days though uh, go back up question C calculate the force on a single electron um, if we're looking at uh, the force on a single electron that means we're going to have to uh, I'll, I'll make this one go a little bit slower we're trying to find F we um, have some information, we have the voltage, we have the distance, that's 20 volts, the distance of separation, and we now have E, the electric field strength, over here, 500 volts per meter. So some of this information will be helpful, some of it won't be helpful. Let's just write down E so I've got it all on the same question here. Uh, volts per meter. Now remember the other alternative units are Newtons per Coulomb um, per Coulomb, see I'm writing it both in the old style 
if if we this this one here actually gives us a little clue. Um, what's the equation that gives us 500 newtons per coulomb? What, what's the equation that gives us that form of the units? Newtons is force over coulombs is charge, gives you the electric field strength. And it turns out we're trying to find the force, so that's the one we're trying to find out. We know the electric field strength, and we're told it's the charge on a single electron. We actually do know that, even though it's not stated in the question, it's a constant, like the speed of light, and uh, it's 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. That's the standard charge on a single electron and it is negatively charged because an electron is negatively charged. So if we if we use uh, two bits of information from all of that, the charge on the electron and uh, the electric field strength, um, which e, e is the symbol for the electron but it's actually the same as Q. Q is any amount of charge, E is a constant uh, charge for that charge on a single electron. But if we can plug those numbers into this equation um, and and find F, but we'll first rearrange it because we want F to be the subject of it. F equals electric field strength times by the charge. Um, in this case, the Q is E. Let's plug those numbers in. So it's 500 newtons per coulomb times by the amount of coulombs, 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19, and that is going to equal. Well, let's see if we can do this without a calculator. Um, the times 10 to the minus 19 will sort itself out because um, we're losing... Or we're, we're lo that's 0 0.00019 decimal places down the track um, on, our, on our number. And we've got 0, 0, so that's like times 10 to the power of 2, 5 times 10 to the 2. Um, so if we were to uh, calculate it, we've got 5 times 1.6 and then times 10 to the power of negative 17 because that 10 to the 2 plus the 10 to the 19 we can uh, make it times 10 to the minus 17. Now, little trick for the 5 times 1.6 uh, five, 6 5s five are 30 but there's one decimal place so that's 3 and then 5 1s are 5 so 3 plus 5 gives us 8. So 8.0 plus 2SF since most everything else in there is the 500 um, what does it come from? 4 centimetres is 1 significant well maybe we can only go to 1 significant figure because 4 centimetres is to 1 significant figure um, so let's just make that 1 significant figure 8 times 10 to the minus 17 and we're almost there units, newtons remember the question is asking the force experienced on 1 electron that's a very small force but an electron is very small so that's more than enough to steer it where you want it and the final question just going back up is uh, state the name of the shape of the path followed by the electron. Okay, this one might not be immediately obvious, uh, but we'll give it a go anyway, because that's why we're here. Um, remember, there is an unbalanced force on it. Okay, whenever there is a force, an unbalanced force that leads to an acceleration. Okay, unbalanced force is a vector, so they've got the direction part. So does acceleration, they've got the direction part. Um, when there's an acceleration, remember that is a rate of change of velocity over time. There's a change of velocity over time, uh, which is, if we look at the units of that, because we're, we're interested in the shape, and the shape of a path is a sort of a distance or a displacement measurement. If we look at the units, that is meters per second per second and so <laughs> this force leads to an acceleration which leads to an increasing distance covered over time so it's not just a leading to a distance over time it's leading to an increasing distance covered over time and that brings in that second squared factor uh, let's move that across okay meters per second squared so that squared factor um, is going to lead us to believe that it's a parabolic pathway, exactly the same as with projectile motion when you've got uh, this, this um, uh, parabolic pathway of, say, a ball that's being thrown through the air um, or thrown and then it flies through the air. 
and it's accelerating due to gravity. In fact, the force is going to be the same. Remember, F equals mg. For our electron, we've got F equals, instead of the mass, this time we've got the charge. The charge is the electrical mass, if you like. And G, instead of gravitational field strength, we've got the electric field strength. And so both of these forms of the equation are exactly the same, but that's kind of irrelevant because they're both experiencing a constant force because it's a uniform electric field in this case, a uniform gravitational field in the case of um, a projectile. So it's going to follow that parabolic path as it's accelerating. There we go. More than just uh, the basics, but well done if you've listened all the way so far.